Hello everyone, Ben from A Drama Day back again and um, doing a couple of videos in quick succession just to, uh, to knock some on the head. So this particular one um, is this bottle here um, and I've got the full bottle or at least it was a full bottle. Now normally when I do videos um, most of the time I'm going in blind as in I've not tried it before. Uh, as you can tell I have had some of this. Now I have actually given quite a lot of this away as samples as well so I've had some of this before but not a great deal. As you can tell by quite a few of the bottles behind me although they're part of my work I've got a lot of bottles that are open don't have much out of it because I try it and then I move on to the next one so I have started recently I'm um, sending people little samples for them to try as well and kind of doing sample swaps to go in the uh, the pile for newer drama day videos um, but this is actually one of mine uh, that I bought when I was on holiday in Florida two years ago now uh, I actually picked this bottle up um, so it's the St Augustine distillery um, quite looking forward to uh, sharing this with uh, you watching um, so before I actually crack it open and have a dram myself and I nearly broke the bottle with my, my wedding ring um, let's find out a little bit more about the distillery itself St Augustine is a city on the northwest coast of Florida, 40 miles south of Jacksonville, 100 miles north of Orlando, and considered to be the oldest city in America. Founders Philip McDaniel and Mike Diaz were local entrepreneurs who came together in 2011 to bring a new business venture to a rapidly improving area, viewing craft spirits as the way to success. With the help of 22 local investors, they purchased the historic Florida Power and Light Ice Plant. The first in Florida, it was originally built in 1907 to produce block ice for the Sunshine State. Converted into a distillery, restaurant and museum, the business opened in 2014. Former master distiller of Maker's Mark, Dave Pickerel, along with Jake Norris from Stranahan's, helped the pair create recipes for the various spirits they intended to produce. As previously, Philip and Mike had no experience of spirits production, instead visiting other distilleries to gain knowledge and ideas. The distillery also makes a point of sourcing ingredients as locally as they can, as well as considerably giving back to the community that helped launch them. And in September 2019, the pair opened a second distillery nearby, City Gate Spirits. Maybe one day, that will be covered in another Adrama Day episode. We can but hope. At the time of recording, St Augustine Distillery lists the following. The Florida Double Cask Bourbon, a Port Finished Bourbon, a Sugar Cane Vodka, a Pot Distilled Rum, and a New World Gin, which is also complemented by two Vermouth Barrel Finished versions. So, let's go on to tasting the dram itself. Um, so, as I say, I have had this before. It's been a good while, probably about six months since I did try this. So I've got my jigger to hand ready. So let's get some in here. Now, the St. Augustine website is actually very, very um, comprehensive about the details behind each of their spirits, um, which is very handy for people like me who are trying to give you as much information as I possibly can do. So I've got this typed out on my phone because it's pretty complex. They do go into quite a lot of detail as well. So this, which is the Florida Double Cast Bourbon, and hopefully you'll see that on there. So this is 60% regional corn, 22% malted barley, 18% regional wheat. It's matured initially in 25 gallon new oak barrels at different char levels. And then some of the spirit is transferred into 53 gallon barrels, essentially to try and reduce and minimize the amount of evaporation that they're gonna get through those casks. Because Florida, as we know, it's the sunshine state. It would be my second home. I go out there every year. It's a pretty hot climate. So they are losing a lot through evaporation. So they're actually transferring it into bigger barrels to try and actually minimize the contact of liquid within wood so there's a bit more space in there to try and minimize evaporation. How successful that is, it's difficult to say. It gets a bit technical in terms of evaporation, surface level, all of this lot, but that's what they are doing. Um, it's a combination of barrels ranging from, now on the website it says 16 to 28 months. Um, however, what you might be able to see, I'm hoping that it's gonna be able to pick it up, is that actually says on that label, aged two years. Now, on the website, they make a point of saying that their label will show the minimum age of the cast that are in there. So it says aged two years, so it should theoretically be a minimum of 24 months in a cask. Uh, whether that is actually the case or not, I don't know. Um, anyway, so to um, add some complexity as well, 7% of the spirit they use is also finished in port pipes. So this is 
not the same as the port finished bourbon that is a completely different release and i would really really like to try it just sadly i think it's only available at the distillery itself and i've not had the opportunity to get up to the distillery in person now i do go out to orlando every single year i'm actually supposed to be out there right now but thanks to coronavirus no flights to uh, america Orlando is shut down, none of the theme parks are open. My, myself, my wife and my three children are supposed to be in Orlando right now for the Easter holidays and unfortunately we are not. So, I'm going back out there later on this year, we've rescheduled to August later this year and hopefully I might be able to get up to the distillery itself and pick up a bottle of that poor finished bourbon because it sounds fantastic. They also have a gin uh, and as it is, I actually bought the gin as well. So this is the St Augustine gin and I highly recommend this. Now, none of this is available in the UK. Not the gin, not the bourbon, none of it. I've, it's only available in America. They don't distribute to the UK as yet. I have actually talked to Philip McDaniel about seeing whether my employer could potentially be a, um, a distributor in the UK. Nothing's come of that yet, but I do live in hope. Um, but this gin, the new old gin that they've got, um, it has five citrus elements in it and it's very very citrusy light fresh easy drinking really zingy if you're a gin drinker as well this is absolutely fantastic if you can get your hands on it um, but we are talking about whiskey this is a drama day not a gin a day that might be another channel um, and uh, this is uh, you're looking at 49.99 um, so ABC liquor stores um, total wine and more which is where I picked up my bottle 49.99 uh, 49.99 dollars across the board which for me is you know kind of my middle level of if when I'm on holiday and I'm buying a bottle of bourbon in America I tend to look at that $50 mark as kind of like I'm gonna get something pretty damn decent for this but something a little bit more unusual a little bit more premium so this is also let me just put the lid on before I um, look at the thing so 93.8 proof so that's US proof so if you want to know what the ABV is for US proof you just divide it by half so it's 46.9% uh, alcohol by volume I love the bottle I, I think this is absolutely gorgeous um, it's one of these where it's actually got the picture on the back so that you can see it through the liquid so it doesn't quite look as good when there's nothing in it um, but when it's full and you can see that picture on the back of it it's a really nice bottle shape it's kind of wide quite thin nice it feels good that's I, the one thing I, I I'm a sucker for particularly with bourbon is a cool bottle I'm always a sucker for um, but this was a combination of a bottle I really like the look of and the fact it was a Florida bourbon which I go to very often so naturally I was going to try this so 46.9 yes so you know a little bit stronger than most let's see how we get on this so nose good bit of spice on this actually there's a slight sourdough element but not too much um, there's a, a soft dry chili but it's not too overpowering there's that lovely kind of vanilla -y character but there's a slight burn element to it as well there's a definite spice though and it's sort of like chili flakes but there's it's like dry um, dark chocolate and dry chili flakes really like this nose there's a lot going on in here i think that alcohol percentage is helping as well i think if it was say 43 percent it would probably just die off a little bit and would be a little bit flabby but it's not too overpowering that that balance of, of alcohol and the the nose that's in there they've got it just about right there's enough fire and heat from the alcohol that's making things more and more interesting it's kind of accentuating that chili spice that's there And that chili flakes comes through as well dark chocolate you're talking 80 90 percent cocoa dark chocolate on this there's a nice earthiness to it and it's that earthiness of really high cocoa but the chili is there now some bourbons and if you've watched a lot of my other videos where i've talked about bourbons i tend to err on the sweeter softer side ones where they're really spicy really kind of dry almost sour are ones that sort of turn me off a bit and this is getting there but it's still not quite dry enough to turn me off I love the complexity on this I love that dark chocolate element I really like that kind of dry chili flakes 
there's there's cinnamon but there is a bit of soft sweet spice as well this kind of nutmeg in there as well good Christmassy type whiskey the finish lingers the heat is there from the alcohol but it's not overpowering and it does ease away relatively quickly it's not a massively long finish but it is decent mm. that second mouthful I'm getting more kind of orange orange marmalade there's a zestiness to it there's a citrusy element that's now coming through orange associated with Florida it goes hand in hand and there is an evo evocation of that type type of uh, of the state itself there is fresh oranges but it's orange and dark chocolate and chili flakes which is you know, a great combination anyway it's a very well balanced bourbon if I was gonna put a down note on it I'd say the finish is slightly lacking there's more in the mouth than there is on the finish what the finish is there turns into spice but that oranginess doesn't quite continue however it's not dying off completely so there is still something to be working with after you've swallowed I really like this I think this is a really interesting bourbon um, I think there is enough spice to it that uh, to be honest I think for pretty much any bourbon drinker this will go down really well um, if you like softer sweeter lighter bourbons what spice and dryness is there isn't too overpowering but if you do like your bourbon with a kick and with a bit of that dryness and with that chili flake and that kind of intensity of, of some of the, the sort of the higher higher alcohol content bourbons or the ones which do have that kind of dry earthiness there is enough in there that you're probably going to go yeah actually not maybe not quite as full on as I like but yeah I do like this 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 works really well on quite a few counts I think if, if you're not liking this it's probably going to be slightly too spicy for you but as somebody that is self-confessed prefers that softer sweeter style I still really like this I love the balance that this has got I wouldn't put water with it I think the ABV is probably about bang on I think it gets the balance right there is heat from the alcohol but it's not overpowering it's not hitting the back of my throat it's accentuating the flavors that are there but it's not over it's not dominating them it's not killing it I'm not thinking oh, if I add water this will probably open it out I think it's open now enough I think any lower any like a 43 I think it would probably just dilute what flavors are there the complexity that's there slightly too much I really like this I do have a soft spot for it because it's from basically the place where I go on holiday every year and I love that area and I'd move out there if I could do I would love to be able to say that you know I work for the company that distribute this in the UK because I could quite easily sell bucket loads of this to retailers I think the bottles gorgeous the gin is fantastic I really really like the gin I'd love to try some of the others hopefully later on this year when I get out there I'll be able to go and pick up some of the others I'm getting into rum in a big way now I'm not so keen on vermouth so I'm probably gonna stay clear of them but I really want to try their pot still rum as well but for a relatively new distillery that has gone down that craft route which arguably is kind of a little bit OTT to kind of go in as a oh, we're a craft so it kind of smacks of hipster it kind of smacks of you know you're trying to ride on the coattails this is the cool thing but the proof of the pudding is in the eating or the drinking in this case and actually the spirit of this is really good and having had the gin as well which was also really good it makes me confident that everything that they're doing at the moment is actually of high quality I'm intrigued to know what Citygate is like because having done a bit of reading up on it so Augustine is the premium end and Citygate is going in for a little bit of a kind of entry level price point uh, and style they've got a lot more kind of flavoured whiskies which I'm not a big fan of however when I'm out there I am going to try and find if they do have a straight bourbon single malt whiskey anything like that that's not a flavoured one I really would be interested to see what it's like compared to this so I should be saving what I have left of this just to do a comparison when I get around to doing that if I get around to doing that but all in all, if you're looking for a good quality bourbon that's not going to break the bank, that's a little bit interesting, that's got complexity and is, is kind of, you know, going to suit pretty much any bourbon drinker's palate, I don't really think you can go much wrong with this. Uh, I do like it a lot. So, very impressed. 378 is done. I wish you all the best. Stay safe, keep well, and I shall see you at the next one. Cheers.